was such such in a turmoil ke main mujhe baat karni hai kisi se and what should i do and i'm so angry about things so i i started to write I, midnight news was something that i believed had a simple language yet complex i i think i started writing when i was in a ninth grade i wasn't that i wanted to prove myself if i could write better if i could uh, always do something so the concept of midnight news i realized it has to be very raw Welcome to another episode of the Liquid Gold podcast. In today's episode, we have a very dear friend of mine and a pleasure of introducing the extraordinary guest. As you can see, uh Mr. Farhat Ali Khan. Farhat Ali Khan is a remarkable individual who wears multiple hats and <laughs> making a significant impact in various aspects of his life. And in this podcast and this episode today, we'll be learning a lot about his book his art and his whole career in an hour or two we will see and how are you farad bhai kaise hain i'm i'm doing great uh thank you for that introduction actually loved it um or uh i am i i think we've been planning this for so long right uh i think two weeks mm. and uh, jab se i was very yeah excited. that's just the case how scheduling works it's been I have <laughs> that's why we've uh, stopped the marketing we, we have the whole one and a half month booked with guest and it's just us world building and also apologies for that as well because we were supposed to record it a week before but there were some issues from our end where the miscommunication happened so we couldn't specify what was when for us so th- sorry about that but yeah speaking of which farad bhai like we go back from a long history kyunki you you're from riyadh as well yes so saudi's experience how's that in a nutshell for you i think it's it's kafi bitter sweet actually uh, i stay there and i get to know ke yaar kitne badhiya memories bane hain in fact uh, you know in fact just the materialistic things there the, the quality of food uh, and, and everything is being missed here in delhi exactly but um, again when you stay there for so long you realize that you've been missing out on some good opportunities that you definitely get it in delhi so uh it's it's nice mm. it's nice i do miss saudi but i think once you come to delhi it's it's more like the other is a place to visit now uh, delhi is where you actually consider your but eventually when i come to uh come to meet people here in delhi and they ask me that look riyadh is my home that is where i come from that so mm. i think for for nris like us uh hamara concept of home bahut uh, complex ho jata hai uh, you don't know ke aap kya bole when they ask you where you are from that's that's one of these questions where i think it's tough to tackle as an nris student uh you, you should you tell them that you're an indian mm. that's true mere mere end mein it's uh, the, this is what i faced when i came to scotland because through my conversation that was the hardest question to answer which was where are you from because to explain them about my saudi life or india's life it's complicated and jab aap saudi ke bare mein baat karte ho to alag reactions hote hain and india ke bare mein baat karte ho to alag reaction hote hain this is so weird that people came up to me in scotland and they told me that you don't uh, like this is a, like a, like no offense uh claim disclaimer but they said you don't look in yet you feel a lot more middle east into us so i uh, they told me you look a lot turkish so uh, i just you know was joking with the, uh, joking about this with my dad ki you know what ye bol rahe the and he said yeah our uh, like bloodline dates back to iran <laughs> so your my your grandfather is from iran and he used to write poems in farsi and we still have that book in our house so that's how it went through and like after 22 23 years i got to know that pk it trades back to iran and it's so hard for uh, me personally to call a home a home because we've been immigrants for most of our lives it's for me answering that question is in a way that he, i haven't spent more than a decade in a single house so we've always moved so it's been 6 years in our place then eight more years in another house and then we shifted to india and then from there on now we have a permanent house but then in pursuit of my career i left it after eight years again 
and now it's just again you know the whole battle goes on so this on this question where are you from is very hard but good thing is that we always learn a lot and i think as immigrants you're very much strong mentally because you learn a lot to be like independent very really fast but saudi for me personally is a safe haven mere liye bhi wo ek ghar ki tarah and as again the food that's the only thing which cannot be differentiated and it's so basic yaar it's so basic uh, like earlier in our other podcast also when he said that pakistani cuisine mein saudi ka touch hai but hamara wo hai dish so wo log bhi bahut acha bana lete hain khana is cheez mein but yeah that's how it is but speaking of saudi's transition to india like how was that for you wahan se india aana and then living here cultural shock or any sort it it was it was it was a struggle it was a struggle definitely for the first few months because you're not aware mm. of the people right and then jo aapke uh, school ke friends hote hain you realize that uh, the all those promises that we made of sticking together that doesn't really last oh. long and then you realize that everybody has this uh, journey that they have to be on and apne liye khud ek rasta banana i think ek mentally psychologically i think yahi ek task tha ke to to adjust first and then physically to hona hi tha to wo mental jo struggle tha pehle i think that that did take a toll on me uh, it still does sometimes but i think uh, it's 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 just a lot of things at one point फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर लोगों की बातें हैं अगर हम वहाँ से शुरू करते हैं लोगों की लैंग्वेजेज हैं लोगों का कल्चर है देर इज अन्स ऑफ आइसोलेशन आई बिलीव फॉर फॉर स्टूडेंट्स लाइक आस जो दे डोंट नो अलॉट अबाउट इट दे डोंट नो कि हम उस जगह पर बिलोंग करते हैं कि नहीं वी डोंट नो अबाउट द लैंग्वेज दैट वी स्पीक बैक इन आर होम टाउन क्या हम वो हैं या नहीं हैं again there is this whole identity uh, uh, you know this crisis going on and that happens i have i have come to this point that i have made peace with the fact that ye cheez mere life long rehne wali hai and uh, ek wo cheez to definitely rahi hai ki do you talk about the deserts of the arab or do you talk about the spices of india mm. it's just a, just a metaphorical uh, concept so it gets tough and then when you speak about your experience to people uh, they find it amusing yeah uh they're like oh wow what's there and the first question is dubai se kahan se ho and you're like no we are from saudi ha to pehle to geographical aspect hi change ho jata hai but then yeah sorry it's just it's it's just uh happening sa sa so there's no one linear path of struggle going on there's this constant process that keeps happening of explaining and of adjusting and then having to choose people that understand you and you understand them hmm. so uh Yeah, yeah what was your what was your struggle because you've been shifting homes as a continuously yeah uh, for me it was not that big it, it has been very streamlined as well you you because obviously the downside and the negative aspects of those bits i don't think your family allows it to reflect on you so you never really know how bad was it or how good was it but for mm-hmm. us it was always a safe space because we were always protected somehow in saudi that was the case but when you come to india and you get that independence the one thing that my father also wanted for all of us or of all of my siblings me and my elder brother and my younger brother to adopt was the street smartness and to handle every person in a way that's respectful and in a way that doesn't offend anyone or uh, you know makes a hierarchy in our conversation ki you are above them or they are above you so like just to speak with everyone with respect that was his um uh like niche and when we first came to aligarh that was his main reason why he wanted us to be there because he thought that uh, students who are coming to aligarh and studying there apart from education the one thing that they really learn and they are really get good at is to be a bit street smart to handle all sorts of people from different back- backgrounds different ethnicities and i think wo अच्छा था मेरे लिए एक्सपीरियंस उस चीज़ के लिए फॉर मी इट वाज वेरी नाइस मेरे लिए इजी था वन थिंग वाज दैट मेरी फैमिली मेरे साथ आई थी सो दैट वाज रियली गुड बट मेरे सारे दोस्त जो थे वो अकेले आए थे एंड फैमिली वर बैक होम सो दैट वाज अ बिट ऑफ अ डिफरेंट डिस्प्यूट एंड अ डिफरेंट जर्नी फॉर देम बट फॉर मी माई फैमिली शिफ्टेड विथ मी 
एंड मैं वहां से फिर अपने अलीगढ़ में रहने लगा बट इट वाज अ वेरी स्ट्रीमलाइन प्रोसेस फॉर मी इट वाज जस्ट द फैक्ट दैट यू हैव टू एडजस्ट विद पीपल विद डिफरेंट पॉइंट सेट डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड्स एंड उस चीज को बस ह्यूमिलिटी के साथ फेस करके थोड़ा सा मेरे लिए इजी रहा बट या बट आई व्हेन इट कम्स टू आइडेंटिटी क्राइसिस डूड आई फील कि आई एम एन अमलगम ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दीस थिंग्स माय एक्सपीरियंस इन सऊदी माय एक्सपीरियंस इन इंडिया आई एम सो ग्रेटफुल दैट वी गॉट द चांस टू बी uh studying in saudi because we had the opportunity to explore more of india's culture than people in india because you have friends from hyderabad you have friends from kerala canada uh gujarat north india like bareilly side and all of those bits as well so i think wo bahut ek achhi cheez thi hamare liye to explore all of those cultures cuisines in a lunch box during recess time to wo bahut acha tha phase i think wo चीज ने मुझे बहुत अच्छा शेप करा है टू एक्सेप्ट एवरीवन इवन हियर इन स्कॉटलैंड एंड इंग्लैंड द कल्चरल शॉक वाज वेरी मच रिलेटेड टू द क्विजीन एस्पेक्ट नॉट द वे हाउ यू शुड ट्रीट पीपल बिकॉज़ वी हैव बीन अवेयर ऑफ दैट मोस्ट ऑफ आवर लाइव्स बट द मेन थिंग अबाउट हियर विद आवर ऑडियंस एज़ वेल इज़ योर जर्नी टू बीइंग अ राइटर एंड नाउ परसीइंग योर करियर in that how has that been for you and when did that came about that that's my first question i think i started writing when i was in 9th grade i believe and i remember that meri kisi se ladai ho gayi thi uh i think school mein uh to uh, and i was such such in a turmoil ke main mujhe baat karni hai kisi se and what should i do and i'm so angry about things so i i started to write some. typical typical teenager stuff ha wo ladai ho chuki thi and then i wanted to but it was more of not it was not a lot of physical fight it was just a more mental stuff going on so uh so i wanted okay. to just write something and i and i started to write with just a quotation it was as simple as that and i think i mentioned that in my second book the last page mein that this is what i started with and this is what i come out with after what 7 to 8 years later तो उससे एक चीज शुरू हुई थी आई हैव बीन थिंकिंग ऑफ परसुइंग अ करियर इन राइटिंग बट आई एम नॉट डूइंग दैट आई करेंटली वर्क एज एन आईएलएस एंड स्पोकन इंग्लिश ट्रेनर बट आई आई डू लुक फॉरवर्ड टू माय पीएचडी डिग्री समडे एंड एंड देन बी एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इन अ यूनिवर्सिटी एंड टीच देम इंग्लिश लिटरेचर बिकॉज़ दैट्स व्हाट हैज ऑलवेज अह नो इंटरेस्टेड मी एंड इन फैक्ट साइकोलॉजी एज़ वेल आई थिंक ये दो चीजों ने मेरे राइटिंग स्किल्स को काफी पुश करा है इन ऑर्डर फॉर मी टू राइट एफिशिएंटली आई आई थिंक यही से शुरू हुई थी यार एंड देन आई बीन राइटिंग एंड देन स्लोली एंड ग्रेजुअली आई स्टार्टेड पोस्टिंग इट तीन लोगों के अच्छे लग तीन लोगों को अच्छे लगते थे देन आई वाज लाइक ओह वाओ दैट्स दैट्स नाइस एंड देन आई केप्ट आउट मोर एंड देन आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग दिस बट इट वाज नॉट एक वन डे प्रोसेस इट टुक मी इयर्स टू रीच टू अ पॉइंट वेयर आई कैन थिंक के हाय आई कैन पब्लिश दिस बुक आई कैन आई कैन थिंक ऑफ दैट वन सो या दैट्स लाइक वन स्टेप एट अ टाइम आई थिंक फॉर एवरीथिंग दैट इवन इफ इट्स फॉर टू मंथ्स के इट स्टिल टेक्स अ ग्रेजुअल प्रोसेस अनलेस यू आर वेरी टैलेंटेड इन अ डिफरेंट केस बट मैं कभी इतना टैलेंटेड टैलेंटेड नहीं रहा हूं आई हैव टू ऑलवेज वर्क हार्ड फॉर मी टू गेट अ सीट एंड uh i have always believed that i am not talented i have just worked hard <laughs> so there's a new pata hai pata hai i i most of my information is just from reels or like motivational quotes that i would just st- like see anywhere but one thing that i you know got from a speaker was that i realized a connection between my luck and my hard work is and which was that the more i the more i worked hard the more i felt lucky with my work so i think that's the correlation between them so you saying that i've always hard worked and i've never felt that i was talented i believe now looking at your work and looking at your position where you stand at everyone will say that oh my god he farhat is talented he has been gifted with a skill of writing and he writes but the back end process which you know deals with the whole work ethic and the process of it uh, wo cheez jo hai I, i'm not sure i, I don't think like I, i believe messi is the only uh, like person jisko main soch sakta hu ki ki ha luck tha involved usme bahut but yeah he's also a hard worker magar and also he's 
like talented as fuck like he's really talented but for other guys typically guys like us it i feel ki if you work a lot hard then we'll feel more lucky because you'll be the right guy at the right place at the right time just because you put in the, those work and um, yeah that's that's how i perceive it and that's how i see it but your process as well has been i i, I personally feel ki after your 12th you should really focus on those aspects as well on building those skills and building skills that you really want to put yourself in and you want to put your energy into it but i think that's what that's the same step that you've taken as well a bit early uh, i would say because you started writing at 9 uh, which is a really great thing i'm not sure if i knew what i wanted to do when i was in my 9th grade i just saw this movie kismat connection i'm not sure if you've seen it i know is it by Sha- uh, it's starring shahid kapoor shahid yeah 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 it's starring shahid kapoor he was an architect and that seemed cool to me because an architect is related to construction field and i wanted to be an architect from there on it became to civil engineering and from there on it proceeded to other aspects as well but i'm really glad that i followed those bits and i'm i'm happy with the guy that i am today i'm i'm pretty sure that you must be as well you should it's okay to just you know sit and acknowledge it yeah i think it's is just that i'm i i is just that i am i'm satisfied i think but i don't know if i'm quite happy because i think that ah. i could do more there's always this thing that uh, there's just two percent more i could do maybe if that's ha- that happened with my first okay. book when it came out and i realized that well uh, it, it's, a, it's a it's a nice book of course but do i wanted to have a wor- body of art where i could actually establish myself as a writer that i believe the first one it did but it felt more of uh, i don't know agar main ek age range dunga us book ko so it would be like from 12 to 17 okay. and i wanted to have i have a body of art that would fit onto every uh, age category so i wanted to come out and i started pushing myself even further and i was like i i need to do something new but then uh, i had to make sure that it's not completely different mm. i wanted to stick to the traditions as well then i realized well let me see what makes me a little different and what i could do more so i started to do a little more experiment with the book that i had you know more experimental poetry i'm not following those structures that people usually follow and i'm coming out with something different i would ts elliot would i i think definitely disagree with my style of writing but uh then i wanted to have some more contemporary touch to it then i would want to have something religion to it as well mm. something more mythical something more magical something that invokes images and metaphors in people's head and and when i want people to read and they think what is going on it's such an absurd idea and that's it yes that is what i want to do that exactly is what i want to do so, so uh I, midnight use was something that i believed had a simple language yet complex ideas colors was it's a simple idea written beautifully that is how uh, and did that came about through this idea like the inspiration behind midnight use was that through this by midnight breaking all use. the uh, norms but still keeping it to the well connected to the traditions my professor advised me on this and it's a really cool story so mm-hmm. i i gave um, her name is dr saba mahmood bashir uh, and she she's my professor in jamia mil islamia and um, i gave her my first book and i told her ma'am i would want you to read this and i would love to have your reviews on it and then i was quite nervous because i knew that she was going to tell me something that's wrong and and i would actually take that oh, uh, seriously and i would work on it but she tells me that farhat i i liked it i mean it was such a good book and and i was happy and, and there was this one friend coming to me and i said i think i'm crying because uh, it's it's someone from of that stature really praised my book mm. then she advised me saying that you are restricting your uh you know you have a strong uh, vulnerability you're restricting yourself with these rhymes or uh, try for more free words okay that's what i did that's what that's when i came out with midnight views became the number one best seller i got an opportunity to yes. op- opportunity to speak as a tedx speaker uh and i think it that's i think that's how it changed my life so i think teachers and professors have always encouraged me to do something better with my life 
same thing with me same thing with me i'm 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 really glad uh, and i'm really happy ki we got these opportunities we got these type of leaders we got these type of uh, mentors jinhone hame aise help kara hamare like hame shape karne ke liye because for me like my communication skills were so bad but on my eight, in my eighth grade in like back in school i, I i'm not sure if you remember her miss hamida ma'am she she I, i used to stammer a lot so she really helped me overcome that and from there on there were many uh, teachers as well in 9th and 10th grade there were there was rashid uh, rashida ma'am and in my btech days uh, during my btech time she, there was this professor dr priyanka singh who i would really dedicate my whole career to because she helped me at those times with which were the darkest phases which was during the covid phase and no one knew what to do exactly with their career and our career being very much site oriented i reached out to her and she introduced me to research and she you know helped me a lot with all of those process and i think where i am today it's just because of her efforts and her guidance basically and I, and i'm really glad that you also received the same kind of feedback from your professors and this is what i really encourage all the audience as well to do when they're in their like bachelor's or in their 11th or 10th or in their pre a junior high it's just to reach out to their teachers because they are there for a reason and the the main problem is that you have to be proactive True. in india that's the case you have to show that interest uh but here i feel like the the people in uk really try their best to encourage all their students to come up with their like interest and their whole ideas but in india i believe you have to be a bit more proactive but i'm really glad that you took that step and like who knew and now it's like the best seller in amazon so which is a huge thing a huge thing true true, true. and i was i think i was influenced by by my so i i don't know if you remember her so um she taught mm-hmm. me my ninth grade i uh, do her name is farha ma'am if you, if you know her i think she i she has been this inspiration to me so she was my counselor as well in the school and then she was also my english teacher and i think i just wanted to be like so i had my physics <laughs> chemistry math and computer science in my 12th grade as well but i was so influenced by her i said baba i don't want to do this i want to pursue but, but presently but day. presently you are this. walking on a footsteps per se and are you glad are you happy and i do and i and i get and i got this compliment i got this compliment from somebody from uh, preferably i think it's probably from a student as well yeah it looks like you're following the footsteps of farah and i think this i i took a screenshot and i showed it to her and i said ma'am that bro, that's commendable dude that is commendable not many people that get that to do that not many people get to earn those bits that they really work hard for and uh, you know be able to stand at a pedestal where people are comparing you to your idols and to those guys who you are looking forward to for guidance and they're like because now you are in their in her footsteps you are in her shoes you are inspiring so many students that, that you're teaching as well apart from being an IELTS and spoken english uh, trainer in essence point i believe is there uh, you're also an english teacher in youth for seva yes that's so um that's an ngo that works for um underprivileged students and uh, I, i go there just so there's a slum area that it's, it's near jamia mil islam itself so i go there and i teach them english but it's not it's not, it's not a cake walk actually because they're so tired of people coming in and teaching them for some days and then they're going back so they're quite used to of you know uh these people coming in just for pictures or just for videos and uh so it's it's a, it was a little difficult to gain their trust first and then they come to you actually and then they enjoy recording stuff with you and then you teach them slowly uh and i think it it's, it's something that it's very fulfilling that's something it feels like you are contributing to the society where you've grown in uh course not physically but then more of professionally wise i would say so that's i i think that that's where the wisdom lies in all of these process because me starting out learning the ropes and now after i'm not saying that there will come up there will come up a point where we will be able to, to say that uh you know i i know it all i can teach but 
in apart from, like not considering that level of uh, i think um, I, i think we should be a bit more hum- here like uh, we should bring in some humility in it, with it but when it comes to like learning yourself getting to a position where you feel that okay people are acknowledging your work for that and then i think the next ideal step is to teach the aspiring students or aspiring people who are very young to learn those ropes like the way you have learned and to teach them with all the errors and with all the obstacles that you have faced so that they would be a bit more easier and i think that's the core a uh, core belief where when a person does a research that's the main novelty behind it that you are focusing on a topic and you are publishing it so that other people can listen to, uh, like see your findings and then work on from there on so now being at that stage where you've also published midnight hues as well which i would say thank you for sending me a copy of it i've gone through it i i have so many things uh, and those comments are coming to you from a guy who doesn't read I listen to a lot of podcasts I listen to many people that's because I think from a very young age on my father had everyone come uh, come into our house and then he used to speak we used to have discussions we used to have um debates like uh, household debates and he used to speak so I'm more of a listener rather than a reader but my wife she really likes art and she's a painter herself and she looked at your book and her comments was that it's aesthetically very very nice it's it's so good that you do want to open it and read about it and it it did break a lot of norms i would say it wasn't like any other book that i've read beforehand and again coming from a guy who hasn't read many books but it did felt like that to me that it's not your average another book with a uh, set of poems but yeah i would like to share some of my uh, like favorites personal favorites if you would like me to yeah so the the first one was yes. uh, so yeah. this is in a chronological order from the chapters and um, the first one is the best one that i felt because that one was yeah. like it 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 uh, it hit a very weird spot <laughs> and i really liked it it was a canvas of deceit jo mm-hmm. like it was very creative it had so many meaning oh. to it and i really liked your comment before the recording which was to let people interpret the, it the way they want to and that was the best thing that i the, because listening it from your words now and experiencing it a week before when i got the book i could see that that's what you were going for and that did hit the mark because i did feel that way so really great great job on that so canvas on of deceit no longer called a coward very inspiring very nice very different the theme was very uh, like it was not what i expected and at the same time it's uh, it you know reflected upon the perception of the guy who's not who's going to do something very terrible but now he's thinking to himself that he's no longer a coward really smart and this is like this can come up to the second one the a canvas of deceit is the first bit it was small concise precise and like really good museum of strange art never thought that i would see the world in that way and you did and i'm really glad that you expressed it in in your writing all you do is lay on your bed something that we were talking about before our recording as well like how did the liquid gold podcast come about and uh, i really related to all you do is lay on your bed because of that and uh, this one because i have been updated and we because we are from the same school and we all have we all know each other's uh, like uh, where to and what's about so dear ammi was like it really hit the mark as well i understood it i could relate to it because i know you as a writer but more as a and like not as a writer but i know your journey beforehand and before this book was uh published and let me write a poem which was the inspiration behind you writing so that was the uh, you the, the work and the evol- evolution was sh- shown as you can see that as the last bit and that reflected on how good you are becoming now so it's it's been a like a very good ride for me and i i wrote i like i read it when i was going from my house to my work 
and uh, in my bus i was reading it and in like two days while going and coming back i finished it concise and it helped me a lot like uh, to interpret things that i want to do with my life and when you said that you want psychology as well to be interpreted and to be ex- reflected through your writing i did feel a bit like uh, like i do get that point mainly because your chapters and this is something that i really like as well i'm i'm a very I'm very fond of psychology by myself, myself so if you give like 50 people your book make them read about uh, like all the chapters and make them come up with their top 5 i think the topics they would choose would reflect a lot about how they are feeling at the moment i really thought that because oh. my wife her top 5 were a lot different to my top 5 and her top 5 were a lot related to the creators um a theme and also art and my top 5 are a lot about reflecting about the society about how a pers- perception is being made from a person and those perspectives so those things have been intriguing for me so we were just talking about this and we came up with the conclusion that where we are right now with our life that really had a huge impact for on us on deciding our top 5 so bang on with that as well because that also hit the mark for you f- with what you were going for thank you yeah because so it's 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 uh, really Uh, commendable to see how a book can just change your topics and change your conversation and your flow and get to know and you will get to know a lot about yourself as well through that so thanks but i i think uh i mean i'm first of all uh thank you so much i am so happy that you enjoyed it and uh and again i think uh that's that's i think that's the writer's power i believe you know as as someone as a you're an artist i think you have the power to manipulate and i think nobody does uh like does it like an artist uh because you can hear somebody's story and you could make them the bad person and they would never know you could uh. you could make so many changes in somebody else's story and you would never know that you're reading about yourself to a point or maybe you're reading yourself from a different point of view and then you'll always find yourself so the writer may or may not use you as an inspiration you know so mm. it's it's quite ironic when people tell that we are inspired by the writer and and i think sure <laughs> even the writer is <laughs> see you in the next chapter <laughs> <laughs> yeah so because you're also I, evolving that's i think people make great stories and i think as a writer that that's what you do you just bring it out to the world and you share it with them and i think you know there's this marvel concept going on about the multiverse for me books are a multiverse you transport into a different mm. place all together and then you experience it with such nuances that it makes you wonder that where is your place in the world i think uh so i mean i am very happy to see that uh, people are now coming you know they i mean since the literature is now developing more digitally uh it's it's one of these mm. new emerging theme that all, that we also study in it's it's a digitally uh, rich era now and people are preferring more of so now we have something called twitter hr as well uh, so these are new emerging genres mm. that are coming in literature and i think i'm quite excited to see where is this going to uh, go on and uh, how is literature be changed like one thing one thing i would like to add uh, to this point you know the advancements that's coming in very much appreciated as well magar um thinking about those bits i'm i'm just you know uh, because this is the conversation we had before the recording started which was your intake and your vision what you wanted the audience to pursue with midnight hues and would you like to share that comment again please if you don't mind and then i have another thing an interesting thing that we can discuss about but yeah uh, so midnight hues was more of um you know okay एक एक टास्क जैसा करना था कहीं ना कहीं टू सी हाउ पीपल थिंक कहीं ना कहीं एंड एंड मोर देन दैट आई वांटेड टू प्रूव माय सेल्फ इफ आई कुड राइट बेटर इफ आई कुड ऑलवेज डू समथिंग सो द कांसेप्ट ऑफ मिडनाइट यूज आई रियलाइज इट हैज टू बी वेरी रॉ एंड देन आई 
then the next epiphany mm. that i get is that people are very different when they're not around people and it's their true selves that when they're alone in the night and that's how these midnight hills come in and different shades to a person it can it's all that happening example so, so in psychology we have these uh, uh three sets that we have it's called the id the id the the super ego and the ego so the rawest emotion that comes out is that mm. when for example if you're an angry man and and you're like i will kill this person but then you're like no no i can't do that let me have a better solution to it so the the raw instincts that come in is your id or the id or whatever you call it uh so uh i think i wanted to target more on that so i wanted to bring all that absurd ideas into a place where people think okay wow i mean uh, i thought this was a secret but how is that happening so you're your mind wanders around sin and i think me being a practicing muslim i think i felt more close, closer to the god when uh, when it was at night excuse me perhaps the hajjud or even just just, just crying out to the lord and i think it was so enriching it was so perhaps life changing for me so that night has a lot of uh, you know phases to it for different people and i tried in fact i tried to bring that into the one piece of work that i had and uh as long as people can relate to it yaar because uh main nahi chahta hu ki log usko dekhe ki author kya kehna cha raha hai ya the writer kya kehna cha raha hai main chahta hu wo khud apne andar ye dimag mein sochein ki main aisa kyun soch raha hu is cheez ko leke aur ye kuch aur bhi to ho sakta hai let me think of it in a different way and not just kya kaha ja raha hai you can either do it you can like deconstruct it you can think of okay this can have multiple meanings this line can have multiple meanings uh why is this imagery coming here why is this coming here you can do that um or you can do it structurally you can see why is this the way it is why does it have no rhyme scheme uh is it intentional or is it from the lack mm. of writers in comp- competence uh that's so many things that i want uh from people to when they when they read a 60 page book is this and that's what my only motive was ke mujhe itna zyada kuch bada book nahi likhna hai it has to be of a good quality and uh it brings out a certain thought process logo mein jo unko push kare sochne mein so aisa hona chahiye and i think i want people to re read it at every point of time and i think they could still find themselves kahin na kahin so wahi wahi aspect right yeah uh, it, it is it is uh, it is exactly what you said different phases bhi the dikh raha tha wahi but yeah i think that's what a good book sh- and i think i was never a good reader i would say and then i i came across this one uh, quote and it said that if you don't like reading uh, you're probably not reading the right book and this has mm. been in my head for ever forever and i said you know what let's see so i did not force myself to read the book i just closed it nahi i'm not getting that i'm going to look out for something else i'm going to look out more contemporary i am not going to look out for very classical or middle english mai abhi chaucer nahi padunga mai abhi shakespeare nahi karunga mai abhi wordsworth nahi karunga i would rather go on to something more uh, contemporary i'd rather choose khalid husaini for some time you know i would do tony morrison of course uh but baki i was like no it's the purana nahi pakunga then i think that's how i started my interest and i had to read a lot uh to hmm. come to a point yeah, let me start writing now because any time you write something you're like yeah it's it's not coming up to the mark it's not coming up to the mark so <laughs> i think he uh, are those are those a bit like, of challenges he i think it's a challenge for kind of everybody a... who's trying to achieve perfectionism i think hmm. uh, they don't believe that their work is par so i think i think it's it has it must be something with you as ek when you're starting out a project you're like oh, man, oh it's not it's not i i i i do have that perception ki everything should be perfect but now after juggling so many projects with by myself i have come to the conclusion that a teamwork is very much appreciated and it's it'll you know speed up the process a lot more and mere liye i think to attain perfectionism is now my my definition for that is to just being consistent that's it because i know for a fact that okay once you've achieved that perfection then you're going to be as idle as you were the day that you started that project because now you are again going out finding uh, looking for a purpose you're again 
seeking for new things to do. And that was the bit for me for this year, because for the past five years, I've been just planning and just executing, planning and executing, planning and executing, seeing where I want, want to see myself in the upcoming six months, seven months, one year, two year, and just doing those bits. Now I'm at the stage where I'm blank because I, I, I have reached that stage and now I'm thinking to myself, no, what next? So because of those bits, I feel now is that to get a niche and be consistent. You can be bad at it. Like, for example, if you're talking about art, Picasso has around a thousand or a hundred. I'm not sure. Um, I have to Google it. I'll, we'll see if I can do that. But yeah, Picasso has around like more number of art and painting that we know and his his the the people with the people where they reference his work where they teach his work in universities those art are amounting up to one percent of his actual work so i think he attained perfection after just being consistent with what he wanted and from those work those set of work what people would think as the perfection, as definition of perfect art, where the 1%. So I feel just do as you can, just do what you can, and just try to like share it with the world. And hopefully one day one thing will stick. That's how it is. That's how I perceive my definition for perfection, the perfectionism. Now, I'm, I'm not sure what's your definition for that. Uh, well, what would you like to say on that? The definition of perfectionism. This is definition you're asking me. I think yeah. I am as blank yeah, like as, in, in your as, a, as a piece of paper for now. Because uh, it, it keeps on changing. Yeah. Kabi mein perfectionism ko success se uh, synonymous so much. Sakat nahi mata. And hmm. uh, if, you're, if I would want to tell perfectionism ka to mujhe nahi pata. But since I consider success to be synonymous sometimes to perfectionism. Is success for me is just doing the things that you love at the place where you love and just waking up and thinking hey, yeah, there's something new to look forward to. I think that's success for me. I And I would also encourage people to stop comparing yourself. Uh, you know, you, 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 you see uh-huh. people on Instagram having these business six-figure deals going on and I think not, this, this doesn't happen with everybody. I think it's it's fine to not demonize a nine to five job or a little passion that you do and leave. There's a lot of stability yes. going on with it. So don't get confused by the people you watch on Instagram because there's materialism that it doesn't last long. That's true. That's true. But that's the thing. Like, um, how would you balance that creative side of you then? So you have that creative side of you that you want to pursue something if you're working on a project. And then you also have basic needs and necessities that you have to work on, like for example, paying the bills and all of those bits. How are you balancing that side for you then? I do it on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I do it on the weekends, but because uh, you know, I don't want Simple to sound answer. very uh, no, because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't have time during the weekdays. So uh, I mean, I can get yeah. some ideas. I can write it down on my notepad. Like uh, I want to do this and I want to do that, but uh, it's just that I want to have one thing at a time and not just be mm. everywhere. I mean, I, I have seven days in a week. I could do different things on different days and not force myself because I think the only competition is me. So I just have to be better than the yesterday. Yes. If I had an idea before, I'm having two ideas today. And the third day is going to be better if I execute, if I could execute any one of them. So that's how the competition works. Mm. And that's how you gradually grow. And if you even do this for a week, I think you still start seeing changes within yourself. I mean, month is a, yeah. a long time, but if you do it for a week, and I think it's 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 quite good. And people are now very, uh, I think, addicted to uh, quick results. I think social media has made us that mm. many. Even I, I have, I'm trying to uh, not be that person anymore, but you want quick results you're doing something and you just want it quickly uh, and it doesn't work like that yeah. i think that's how real life you know it teaches you that you need to actually work hard and you know of course uh, we say this right uh, in muslim families uh, i don't know if, if if they say it in your side your family they say harkat mein barkat hai. and uh, this has yeah. been motivating me a lot if you want something in life you need to put in 
action, then you can go and pray to Allah that to put it to have some barakah in it because you can't just not do anything. Pray your salah and then you're like, Manithi, do I mangi or who are you? So that, it's not Amazon. <laughs> you need to work hard. My 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 family my family has the same perspective but on the other side. So our saying goes on with this aspect of failure of keeping the failure aspect in my in our mind, and that goes as ki. Uh, so you said harkat and barkat. We have the same thing, but it goes as mehnat and uh-huh. barkat. So it goes as ki koi task hai, tum mehnat karo. Or agar usme Allah ne barkat dal liya. So you will achieve it. Or if you have done a task in which you have done and you are actually working hard, but Allah has not put any money so you won't achieve that. So if you are feeling down at that phase, where you are feeling that I've put in the efforts, I've put in the time, and still I still see myself nowhere, then you have to come to a conclusion that, you know what, there is no money in it. Maybe there is something, something way more better than this that's written for me. Hmm. That's how it's been perceived in my house and that's what I go with. But speaking of deadlines then, if that's the case, do you set deadlines for you then? Like, you know what, I have this project. For example, let's just take Midnight Hughes as an example because it's already out. It's it's uh, getting success. So with that book, did you have a deadline marked for yourself that, you know what, by next year or by two years from now, I would have this book published or were you just open to your creative side and you were thinking you know what i'll take my time with this and when i feel it's ready to be published i think it's the latter definitely i because i wanted to come out with the work i i I believe my first book was a little rushed uh that's my personal belief and i and i wanted to take my time Hmm. with the second one because i wanted to first work on on the skills on my literary skills and then put in some more creativity to it and then come out so there's constant editing process that keeps happening there's no deadline i mean you're if you're transferring it from your paper to your laptop and then you see well i don't like this line i can just have this changed and now you see oh wow there's a different idea coming so do i need to write a Mm. different poem to it or should i cut it out from here and so there's this constant editing that happens so i don't know if there's a lot of deadline i think if i could publish my book on a bigger platform like Penguin or, or Harper Collins, perhaps. I think they would give me deadlines, definitely. But uh, in this process, I, I I had my creativity for myself. And I think uh, that's what made me more uh, confident. And that's what I think I could complete my work quickly, but then mm. I wanted to see how far I can push myself. To. So, um, I mean, don't set deadlines. Deadlines, are only do it only mm. if you are an extremely lazy person and you really need to get your things done but if you're just if you're just fine then i think you don't need that okay. I... <laughs> no for me because uh you know the pattern that i'm the, the reason why i'm asking these questions to you is because there is um, a difference between my set of principles and your set of principles that i'm noticing here which is that i do set deadlines for me and I think because I have a deadline set in my mind, I invest a lot of time in my planning and I do plan a lot. And once that plan is ex- like done for it, I go for it. So I just go on the execution phase. And then my, in my head, I'm just going with the deadline that I have set for me in my head. Because for me, before I take any decision, what I do is, so this is a practice that me and my wife, we do is that, we set an imaginary line we have a tissue paper in our hand or like a paper or whatever and then we count in the pros and the cons for it so if there is a huge decision that you want to make in your life we set a time for us we think about it like we are going to give this three days and then come up with the decision so because of the deadline you're forced to think a lot about it in that period and we list out the cons list out the pros and then we come up to a decision after three days. Once that's over, and once you've taken the decision, you've set your like uh, way, you've paved that way for yourself. So now you're thinking, TK, I've chosen this for me. Now, no matter what the consequences will be, it's on me. I chose it. It's my decision. So I'm going to take it with my chin up. So that's how I perceive it. 
like taking a decision of studying abroad during covid phase was a hard decision for me but once i took it i was like you know what i'll go with it uh, no matter what the consequences and the consequences were a lot unfavorable for me compared to the good consequences but it, it it's been fruitful for me because of that and i do believe like that mindset has been good for me personally but i do see success in your life as well with that approach so again journeys differ but you know there's so many different formulas that come out from these bits but um uh, we've talked about the key challenges we've talked about all the bits as well are there any inspiration for for you with in writing aspect are there any favorite writers for you that you really want to give a shout out to right now or that you feel like yeah these guys are so good with their work i so so there was this one time where i was uh, interested in black literature and i wanted to uh, trace out racism and i wanted to see the struggles of black community so uh, i've been i've been reading tony morrison james baldwin Bill ba- james baldwin in fact and uh, again so they keep changing because i love more books that are related to more of psychological level as well and uh, so i don't have a personal favorite honestly uh i have never had a personal thing ever for example if it's the kind of music that i hear or it's the kind of work that i want to do if that's if there's a certain something that i for example the food let's say or a place to live so i never had a, a single thing to say well this is the thing i want mm. this is the thing that i like this is the thing i like to read uh it could be considered in a very broad sense so anything with um trauma literature anything with uh, uh you know black community anything with uh something that makes me think a lot uh and makes me want to study more about people so I, that's the kind of reading that i do but i don't have specific inspirations i think there is some kind of uh i don't know there's a lot of uh ambiguity to it you're getting it uh again because again when people ask me about what's my favorite i don't have a certain favorite be it in any sense i i don't have favorites a lot so i keep changing and i keep shifting to different places why because i think mere life mein aisi cheeze ho rakhi hain already ke mujhe apna okay. apna force karna tha change hone ke liye uh after uh, when ha so when i was in 12th grade uh again fir ammi ka intikal ho jana that was a lot to take in and i think after from that point itself i have dissociated myself from a lot of things so i i'm impressed by a lot of things i love doing a lot of things but i don't necessarily take it in and then claim it as this is mine this is my favorite this is my something that i want to do uh, there are no mys in them there's no sense of um, belonging no favorites i believe left so what comes in my way i accept it and then whatever goes i build a good farewell and it's it's that's nice a, that's to a nice approach take care. yeah that's a nice approach uh, i'm going to i'm going to keep that advice that's, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of trauma yeah that's the thing it's it's again with the spectrum <laughs> but, uh, of the uh, related to trauma then where you see yourself yeah. in that spectrum but yeah i i, I do really like that point i'm going to take that with me thanks for that yeah sorry you were saying नहीं यही यही चीज थी यार थेरेपी करूंगा अपना अपने लिए ऑल द बेस्ट डूड ऑल द बेस्ट ऑल द बेस्ट टू यू एंड योर वॉलेट फॉर दैट ऑल द बेस्ट टू यू एंड योर वॉलेट बिकॉज़ फॉर मी आई आई चूज थेरेपी विद माय फ्रेंड्स एंड आई जस्ट टॉक टू देम अबाउट शिट मगर मेरी मेरे दोस्त हैं बहुत जो साइकोलॉजिस्ट एंड थेरेपिस्ट हैं एंड उन दोस्तों से मैं बात करता हूं it's very weird to have psychologist and therapist as your friend because you never know if they are treating you like one of their patients or as a friend because they see it as a wide as- uh, spectrum sometimes as an unbiased opinion when it comes to your topic of whatever you have discussed and when i speak to them and then there, there has been instances many times where i'm like you know what just don't treat me like you like one of your patients please just be my friend for now just speak to me as you would to a friend and it's very hard for them also to zone out from that 
uh, aspect. So it's it's we're just learning and evolving all together because it's it's really tough. It, it is tough. It is tough for that. But still, dude, for that you should like um, with our part, like with our fifty five minutes of conversation. I would say an hour because we've been talking a lot before then, dude. This is an advice which has been given to me by my peers as well in London here in UK in the past like seven months before when I came in because I was so much focused into what I wanted and I was just working on those bits. Like every one of my peers just told me, take it easy. Take some time off to pat yourself on your back and be happy from where or like for what you are and where you have come from. Uh, up to so that's what i would also advise you as well to you know just take it easy be happy and do spare some time for that to celebrate yourself and be happy with everything you have because i can see that workaholic mindset in you uh, that i also have because there has been so many instances in the past year that for me that for example i'll just give a like a quick example in Ram- during ramadan time there had been instances where I was working and I got a call from my wife and I, I answered her and she said, have you broken your fast? And I saw that I have, I, I like I didn't consider that it's Maghrib time and I have to break my fast. I have been four hours like la, like invested into my work and now it's, I've even missed the Ravi because I was so much invested with my work. And those bits have been very hard to balance out for me because for me, I've since my childhood, I've always been that guy who has been working on three, four stuff at the same time. So that's why I feel my approach to life is by setting up deadlines, by having a team with me and working with everyone and trying to help each other and all of those bits. With your approach, I can see a different approach. But I do see success in that. And I do commend you for that success. And I do think you should take that time to yourself to applaud it for you. Because that's something that you do need to think of right now at the moment that you are, uh, where you stand, because you are successful for it. Uh, like, in my eyes, you are successful. That's that's one of the reasons why we wanted you to be in our podcast, so that your journey can aspire and inspire so many upcoming writers, so many guys who are even coming from Saudi to India and then thinking of the competition that they are seeing that they never saw. Same similar thing to me because I came in, my first day of school was me witnessing guys in their third chapters. And I was thinking, dude, this is my first day. I, I'm i here to see and ex- learn and explore. And these guys are so ahead in the rat race that they are three chapters ahead of me and they're just thinking about admission, entrances and all of those things. But Try to digest everything that you have done so far and be proud of yourself for once because you have your book has checked off all the things that you wanted it to, for in my opinion. So I would say that great job, man. Great job with your piece of art, which you have produced. So speaking again, moving on to the same bit, is are there any advices to these writers or to these upcoming guys who are coming in thinking about pursuing writing in, as a field from you as an experienced guy now who's a teacher about uh, literature and about writing? I think if you want to pursue your career as a writer, uh, it's, it's a little difficult. It's a little dicey, definitely. Uh, have a backup as well. Uh, please have a day job and then okay. work, work on your passion too. Uh, second is to work on your skills. Uh, please read a lot first. Say observe a lot. If you can't read a lot, then uh, try to observe a lot and see how well are you observing it and how well are you able to change your thoughts into uh, into a language of any, be it English or be it Hindi or be it uh, Sanskrit, be it uh, you know, French, any any type of uh, literature that you're working in. Just make sure that you are able to. Uh, you know, change your thoughts in a, in a, in a more lucid way. Thirdly, mm. is just, just just start writing. No matter no matter how small it is, no matter how uh, uh, you know it's, it's, it's just the trivial things going on in your life. Write about it. It's it's all right. You don't have to post about it. Definitely, just be writing. 
And if you really want to do this, write a page every day, I would say. Uh, if not, write half a page. But at least do something. Again, mm. uh, do something. Uh, just make sure you're, yeah. you're putting out something. And when you feel that you're confident enough, start posting it. And if not, show it to a couple of people. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, I mean, now uh, I think uh, perhaps I assume I would be tagged in, in the, the video too. You could send me your writings. I would definitely love to read them if they're starting out. And uh, yeah, sure. We will make sure we'll make sure to have your initials and your uh, and your definitely. contacts and, uh, uh, listed in our description for all the writers as well. Of, uh, yeah, kuch bhi yaar, I think, but shuru karo. Ka hai. Don't don't think the log kya kahenge. Aapko itna bhi top nahi sochna hai. Just start doing your work. Kalas. That's the only advice I would give. I'm 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 really blessed to be born in India because that's the thing. Logon ke paas advice dene ke liye bahut saare points hain. And I think when you get those opinions in the masses, that's gonna prove your work because everyone has an opinion. And uh, it's 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 better not to think about logon ko kya kahna hai because one thing that I really liked and and I'm happy to be learning. From when Ooh, I came to UK, yes. that कोई काम छोटा बिल्कुल भी नहीं होता है. Everyone has an important contribution to the society, so it doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it for yourself. So that should be your concern at that moment. It's not for everyone else to judge. And if it's your, it's it's a work that people will relate to. People will come in and appreciate it. And that's the pro side of that aspect. But that's your focus. So there are many con side as well. So that thanks for that for that. Thank you so much. For those advices, because I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have gathered that those points from our conversation, because it it has been so like there's so many things to talk to with you, and um, I'm so good as like it's such a good thing as well that you also have so many layers to yourself as an individual as well as me, and I think that's the best bit about this podcast as well, because last time as well our previous guests also we also had this moment where we were just reminiscing about our past. Through and it reflected through our eyes. So thanks so much. Um, one last thing that we usually do in the Liquid Gold podcast is to just ask every one of our guests before closing in is, which is a question that is that if there is a quote that they live by, or if that there is a quote that you listen to and you've heard it somewhere and you've seen it somewhere and you think you know what I should really uh, follow this quote and implement those quotes in my life. I is think that, is there a one for you? I mean, as a practicing Muslim, we've been, uh, uh, you know, we've been. There's this principle uh, in, in in Islam that is to not get too attached to things around. Uh, you know, be. I mean, take care of your worldly life as well. Do your responsibilities, but know your mm. ultimate goal. Uh, know that there's an afterlife you have to prepare. So, um, I think. Detaching is detachment ka kaafi strong concept ra Islam and I think yehi ek advice dena chahta hoon ke jo cheez aaye usko accept karo aur jo cheez chale jaye uspe na lament nahi karne ki zarurat hai. That doesn't mean that you don't take appropriate steps for it. For example, if you have uh, a narcissistic abuse or you have something going on in your family and you're seeking out help thinking that it's just done ab woh cheez nahi hogi to that's something I don't encourage. Uh, what I do encourage is to uh, move on, but with a more cautious mindset. I think. So, जो चीज आए उसको आप accept करें. You know, work hard for it. उस चीज पे because Allah has given everybody uh, different skills. Just realize that and work on it. If you speak good, then speak well. If you listen good, then listen well. If you can. uh you know make somebody laugh with with good jokes do that i mean there are different different skills that allah has given to people recognize that and then work on it and then realize that this is something i want to do you know uh, and also stop comparing mm-hmm. this is something that i keep enforcing on to everybody ke mat karo compare ye mat yeah. dekho reels ye ye sab lamborghini wagaira theek hai bahut achhi baat hai but You have work to attend, and it's two in it's two in the morning. You have to wake up at six now, so priorities are cool. It's not fictional, not so. You don't call it here. Uh, 
तो यू नो लैम्बोर्गिनी ऐसे नहीं आएगी Yeah. True. 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 Yeah. True. 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 And they, appreciate they the would, I mean, that you have. the people in the submarines. I am. Mm. I'm sure that people have heard about it, and I, and I am so yeah. sure about this thing that they would trade every penny they have just to switch lives, uh, from from anybody on the onto the world who's who's living right now. जो गरीब भी है, they would want to yeah. trade places. कि भाई हर पैसा ले लो, but हमें ये गरीबी बना दो at least. But इस इस hell hole की बात हुआ. You realize that this money is not going to buy you things. It's it's always exactly uh, how how grateful you can be yeah. in your life. That is how it's going to bring you peace. And I and I believe that you can't be grateful unless you are patient, right? And these these two things work together, right? So if you want to be more patient, you need to start working on your gratefulness. Mm. So if you're not grateful, you're not you you're not going to be patient. It's not how it's going to work out. You're if you're impatient for a job or a work. Or a certain a score you want to have in life, a certain goal, uh, you can't have that patience unless you see how far you from come from, right? And you see that, you're grateful, oh, you're content, you're like, okay, let me rest back, let me see what more I can do. That's how you achieve patience. So these two things go hand in hand, and uh, learn to let go. uh i don't know if be happy is is the phrase i want to say because it's not easy for people to become just happy as well yeah it says is is just that it's famous that you pretend that you're happy and then you ultimately do feel happy but it's i think it's bullshit as well but yeah one of the person here in the comment section said uh, um interesting uh conversation it's a matter of practicing what you preach and to you um i'm sorry i can't Uh, pronounce your name i'm sorry if i might botch it but i would say that re- really like with farhat's work the gratefulness and the advice that he has given so far that when it comes to being grateful it does reflect in his book as well and the first thing that i read when i opened midnight blues was the acknowledgement and credits where credits due you have mentioned everything you were grateful for and you had uh, like given a shout out to you have mentioned all the other people with all due respect all those people that have helped you to come up to that journey and with hard work the main essence when it comes to that bit is a sense of humility which reflects from his work as well and if he is advising those bits he is also practicing what he's virtuing uh, virtuing so uh his pursuit in terms of how he's leading his life is very much reflected through his work and i would suggest everyone to go and read midnight hues if they can it's very interesting you can see the art and now from this, after this podcast you might also see all those things that he wanted to ref- wanted that book to reflect is being reflected and uh, bang on again but uh, great to have you as our guest in the liquid gold podcast Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you. The questions were great. I I think more than the questions I felt the conversation was great and thank you for being such a good listener. I I feel happy. I I'm not I don't feel tired after a conversation. I feel more energized. I feel more inspired and I think I've learned a few things from you as well and I and I can't wait to start implementing them and to see if that works on me as well. And actually that's really a good point um the one of the viewers was, who has raised that and i would also say that please take advices from people who are actually working on it mm. i mean if there's somebody out there who's talking about oh you got to be disciplined but then you look at their lifestyle and it doesn't reflect that right yeah i mean they have a lot of family members who pray five times a day dil nahi dukhana chahiye but then <laughs> we see them doing different things right That's so really- i think you desi household mein hota hai kafi so please take advices from and i think the best advices from me as a practicing muslim comes from the quran and that's how yeah. i just paraphrase it and i speak out i think when he say wahi cheez hai and there's just so much to learn from yaar just so much to learn from that book that's lot true of, lot to learn from there yeah but yeah thank you so much farhat and thank you to the audience as well listening Asakal and um, thank you so much farhat and i hope my introduction did justice to your remarkable work throughout because there's just so many more things that we couldn't reflect in this one hour of our conversation and 
I wish you the best of luck for the upcoming endeavors. And I hope to see that everything just comes in with more positiveness and with more success in your, uh, on your side. So thanks a lot. And regarding well, I wish the nothing inspiration but the and for the, you as well. Thank you. Thank you. And with the energy bit you've mentioned as well, that's the main thing for our podcast. Our title is that there is a power within a conversation and the power of conversation is depicted through our podcast. And I hope we do justice to that. And I'm really glad to have you as a guest who have helped and contributed in emitting those powers from our podcast, because we do, I do personally also think of this podcast as a means of therapy where I get to learn so many things from you and all the other guests as well that who, who have previously attended. And there's just so many vast pool of knowledge that we need to explore now. So thank you so much to the audience listening. Thank you to our sponsors. Thanks Farhat Ali Khan, who has joined in to the episode of the Liquid Gold podcast. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you soon.